So what's wrong if the Prime Minister of India decides to visit the residence of the Honorable Chief Justice of India on an auspicious occasion to wish him on Ganesh Chaturthi? Well, with me, well-known uh, legal legal senior Supreme Court lawyer Sanjay Hegre joining us live. Uh, thanks, thanks for joining us today, uh, Sanjay, on on Squirrels. Let me let me first ask you to respond to you know the, the what's wrong. I mean, is legally, constitutionally, is anything wrong in the act of the Prime Minister visiting the Chief Justice's residence for a religious function? If the Prime Minister were to be visiting every Chief Justice on every religious function, then maybe that would be a precedent. And uh, that's the way things are done. But the Prime Minister visiting a Chief Justice who's near retirement, where very many major decisions are uh, pending and where there is no prior precedent, I, I don't think has sent the right message. You, you know, a long time ago, when uh, Chief Justice M.N. Venkatachalaya, one of the greatest Chief Justices India has had, uh, mm -hmm. he was sworn in and at the dinner, the then Prime Minister Narsimha Rao said, I hope the executive and the judiciary have a cordial relationship. Venkatachala has shot back. It can never be cordial. It can only be correct. So there is an uh, there is an impression of excessive cordiality, which bodes ill for both institutions. The executive you know, sir, cannot be seen cannot yeah. be seen as being extra chummy with the with the judiciary. Nor can but the judiciary. I but but I'm I'm just trying to understand. You know, you you look at look at former chief justices, look at former judges of the Supreme Court. You know, Twitter, for instance, uh, has been busy looking at uh, Justice Bhagwati's very laudable letter to the then Prime Minister Indira Gandhi after winning. You know, uh, another former chief justice. That. Yeah, another former chief justice who went on to the Rajya Sabha subsequently. You know, so the the the, the proximity between the political executive. And and, and and the and the judiciary, in many ways, has has consistently been growing. Rightly or wrongly is a different debate, but I'm saying it's consistently been growing. In that context, why should we be questioning what the prime minister has done? See, you have given all instances, and these kind of instances have gone way back to Pandit Nehru's time, when uh, uh, the elder Justice Fazal Ali was appointed as governor. And uh, Mr. Settlewad, uh, the Attorney General, then criticized that move. Uh, we've had uh, Justice Sadashivam who became a governor. I have written in the Hindu criticizing that. This thing, excessive bonhomie between the two wings which are designed to work separately and as checks and balances on each other, bodes ill for the country. Your car has an accelerator, your car has a brake. The judiciary is a brake against executive despotism. If the brake and the accelerator get together, you are more likely to crash out of ignorance. So, has, therefore, therefore, why don't we come to this consensus then? That let them, that, that There's a code of conduct for judges, right? Why don't we specifically mention this? That no judge of the Supreme Court shall visit any minister, any cabinet minister, any prime minister, any president, uh, you know, at their personal residence. Have, have we reached that stage now? Well, there is enough in the court mode and the Bangalore Declaration, which says that the judges must mi be mindful of the fact that they are always in the public eye and that they shall not do anything which will give the appearance of impropriety. Forget the prime minister. Now, if you, uh, if you had an industrialist turning up, say, uh, saying uh, Ganpati Papa Moria, uh, eating a modak or two and, and leaving with no other conversation. But they, they, there were cases of that industrialist uh, uh, pending in the courts. What mm -hmm. kind of message would that take? I, I, I was giving people a football example. If you have, uh, uh, what's it, uh, uh, the El Clasico. But, mm -hmm. uh, and the referee is, wear, is wearing a Barca uh, a scarf. Mm -hmm. What kind of message does that take? Mm -hmm. So this is, uh, this may not be illegal mm -hmm. or unconstitutional, but certainly does not 
give a proper so what are we talking about so therefore are we talking are we talking morality of the the power play or the interplay which exists between the judiciary and the political executive since clearly you're in agreement this it's not as if this is a constitutional question it's not a constitutional violation so do we look at this more through the prism of a moral question it's not necessarily a moral question it's also the a, it's also a question of the administration of justice it's said that justice must not only be done but be seen to be done at an official function bonhomi between in the uh, uh, prime minister and the uh, uh, chief justice ritual handshakes and all that all that is fine but when you transgress into the public space and ultimately bupen uh, for, uh, forget everything we we judge people by by who is let into whose house at what point of time we know who it's only our closest friends that come into the house or or, or any, anywhere near our puja rooms so they, this kind every such interaction and that too which is uh, in the glare of cameras with the uh, video being sent out they, uh, that does not send a healthy message Is I mean, true, sir, I, it, the prime minister is a brilliant politician. He has got what he has wanted. Yeah, sure. You know, I, but but I was I've also been told that this visit of the prime minister to the chief justice's residence was actually at the invitation of the chief justice himself. So, if the chief justice is inviting the prime minister, what shall the prime minister do? Well, the. Uh, let's let's put it this way uh, the the chief justice uh, the prime minister can always say sir you will continue to be in delhi i i will see i will see you next ganesh chaturthi there are so many ways of politely turning down an invitation and sometimes invitations are also sent in ritual fashion okay everybody so so it's both sides i am sure were aware of the optics and both sides seem to think that there is nothing wrong with it though plenty of us feel that this excessive display of bonhomi is not good for either institution what is it that the chief has got i can understand the prime minister maharashtra is an election bound state you know there has been a lot of uh, tussle between the judiciary and and the government top officers in, in multiple cases uh, the prime minister's political optics very clear what does the chief justice get out of this meeting i don't that only time will tell Okay, and what's a what's a possibility, Sanjay? I'm 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 looking at lawyers like Indra Jai Singh asking for intervention of Supreme Court Bar Association petitions apparently being sent to Kapil Sibal. Any possibility of of a formal intervention? Some comment being made by Bar Association. I, the Bar Association is as divided as the polity uh, is in recent times. I would be very surprised if the Bar Association took a formal position in it. Okay. All right, Sanjay. Always a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us and telling this podcast. Thanks, Mubin.